The following presentation is a Shidiak Books audio production, narrated by the author Samer Shidiak. Rule number one: Respect time. How heavy is the bottle of water? I once heard the story of a lecturer who was explaining stress management to his audience while holding a glass of water in his hand. I was inspired to try out this strategy in one of my time management workshops. So I held a bottle of water in the beginning of my session and started by asking, "How heavy is this bottle of water?" The audience started reacting and each gave me a different answer. Some tried the scientific approach. saying that if 1 liter of water is equal to 1 kg and the bottle is half a liter and only half full then it should be around 250 g i smiled and replied back that would have been the correct answer if i was asking about the weight of the bottle of water however i asked how heavy the bottle of water is and these are two different questions You see if I hold the bottle of water for 1 minute the weight would not be a problem but maybe I won't feel that okay if I carried it for 1 hour and if I keep on carrying it till the end of the workshop I'll be leaving the workshop in an ambulance so the actual weight of the bottle of water doesn't really matter what really matters is how long I held it underestimating the power of time we overestimate overestimate and underestimate lots of activities using the exact same line of thought my audience had i'm going to ask you a few questions and i'm going to give you the answers that we got from a survey we conducted to the audience who attended our time management courses What would you feel if your heart stops? That's bad. What would you feel if you get a check for $1 million? That's superb. What would you feel if a piece of delicious steak meat gets stuck between your teeth? That's okay. What would you feel if you have to put your hand above a fire? That's not cool. Now, thinking a little bit more about those questions, you realize that your answer could change dramatically when you learn that. First, when someone sneezes, people directly say "bless you." This is because medically speaking, that person's heart has stopped beating for a fraction of a second. Two, if you get a check for one million dollars and held it for just five seconds. before it was taken away from you you actually had only 5 seconds of happiness and then it was all over 3 if a piece of steak gets stuck between your teeth for more than 30 minutes you will start feeling uncomfortable if it stays for over 2 hours you will lose all sense of concentration and won't be able to perform any task 4 you can pass your hand quickly over a candle or a small fire and this would not leave any sign of burn in fact you will barely feel the heat at all the conclusion from all this is that time can make virtually any theory possible so you can make time your best friend or your worst enemy the past present and future people fear the unknown and keep on speculating about what would happen in the future this is called worrying i remember a personal experience that would best illustrate this point due to my full schedule i used to hit the gym at exactly 6 a.m. every day before i went to the office i used to perform the same exercises for the same durations every single time i would start with cycling and then i would spend some time on the treadmill before I showered and left. On one particular day, I arrived and noticed that out of the 10 cable TV screens on the walls of the gym, only two were functioning 
and the rest were powered off. The two working screens were right facing the bikes where I usually started my exercise. I spent the whole 20 minutes of cycling thinking about how boring my time on the treadmill was going to be with no TV screens. Finally, by the time I finished cycling and reached the treadmill exercise, all the screens were actually functioning. So I simply wasted my 20 minutes of cycling worrying about how empty and boring 45 minutes on the treadmill that never actually happened. People often regret something that has passed. They can't turn back time and go back to do it right. They waste too much time on regret mode to the extent that they actually miss lots of good opportunities to have a good time. On a different note, at around 1.15 a.m., and while we were both working late at Microsoft offices in Beirut, I had an interesting conversation about regret with Khaled Shabat, one of my mentors and good friends. Khaled told me that there are only two things to do about the past. If you can do something about it, then go do it now. If you can't, regretting won't really help much. Is time money or is it actually more valuable? Time is all around us. We all share the same 24 hours a day. Whatever you do would not extend those 24 hours for you. And no matter how bad these hours go, they won't ever shrink. But in fact, how you spend your time does make you who you are. People don't deal with time as a commodity like they do with money. You can always make more money, but you can't get back the past two years of your life, nor can you buy an extra hour to live. I felt inspired by Professor Randy Poch, who had cancer and spent the last few months of his life educating thousands of the value of realizing your dreams and managing your time. Professor Poch gave the example of students who come to him and ask him how much a master's degree is worth. He reflected on the differences between two groups. Students who came in to discuss whether the degree is worth the money or not, and whom he would throw out of his office, and students with whom he would gladly spend all day, and who would tell him that they are not sure how they wanted to spend the next two years of their lives. The later group is confused concerning whether to pursue a master's degree or not. But their dilemma is not the money at all. Special appreciation for the later group is rooted in the fact that these students are discussing time. A person who values himself starts by valuing his time. So to start with, just think of how much you're worth. How much would you make per month in a steady job? Multiply that by 3 or 4, and then divide that by 160. This is how some consultants calculate their hourly fees. So for example, if you make $1,500 per month, your hourly rate is almost $37.5. So the value of your time indicates how valuable you are. Value yourself, and you become more important. But there's more on that. In one of his sales seminars, Zig Ziglar, the legendary American motivational speaker, once said that insurance companies pay millions and millions of dollars every year for lost eyes, arms, broken legs, etc. When you analyze it, you are physically worth millions and millions of dollars. Mentally, experts estimated that if they invest billions of dollars to duplicate your brain, it would take a computer the size of the Empire State Building and it would still not do what your brain can do every second of every day. Generate a thought. You become more important when you first realize how valuable you are. You become more valuable in your organization when you put more experience on the table. They say that experience comes with time and there are no shortcuts to getting it. This is just like the example of one woman needs nine months to deliver her baby. 
but nine women can deliver a baby in one month. Good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from lots of bad judgments. Finally, there is an example on this same point that I always give in the sales excellence trainings I deliver. I ask the salespersons before me, consider this task. You have to deliver a 15 minutes presentation to a top potential customer. And if the result is positive, you would win a $150,000 deal. Then what's the worth of your 15 minutes? The answer is $150,000. And every minute is worth $10,000, even if you don't say a word during this minute. So when you think about it this way, you will cut the nonsense and make every word count. Time versus timing. Although time in itself is a subject in this rule, its derivation, timing, is just as important. The expressions too soon, too late, premature, give the impression that the task was fulfilled, but not on time. Many religions elaborate on the importance of time, putting time in the practical form of timing. For instance, some prayers have to be done at specific timings. Fasting is also done at specific times of the year and according to set timings when you fast and break your fast. Moreover, good timing and bad timing play a major role in public speaking. The speaker has to carefully choose the timing of his words, especially punch words. Also, he or she has to be careful when to change the tone of their voice to keep the audience engaged, attentive, and interested. Rule number one in a nutshell. Respect time. The essence of this first rule is the word respect. When you respect time and respect your time, everything around you will start to change in the right direction. If you try to go around time and take shortcuts at the expense of your time, you are acting just like a thief who would take the easy way out by stealing money instead of working hard to make it. It's just like a voided check. So respect time. It's all what we have. And you may wake up one day and realize you have less.